welcome viewers to another episode of American Reef. I'm Russ Kickle and today we're back here at Wet Pets and Friends in McMurray, PA. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little about the discus fish, maybe breeding, care, etc. First, let's take a word from our sponsors. So last time we were talking about the discus, right? Yes, yes. I'm hooked. <laughs> Meaning I've always wanted it and now that I see them, they're yeah, cool. Yeah, right? that, this is one of the show tanks in the store. It's my 120 gallon discus show tank. Um, basically I have, what I try to do in here is uh -huh. just show a small variety, a very small uh -huh. variety of what I could get in. Uh -huh. And I chose the solid um, species, uh -huh. which would be like the snakeskin blue diamond or blue, there's some solid blue diamonds in okay. here. Okay. Uh, some of the golden uh, albino millennium gold, uh, super red melon, yellow face right. super red melon, right. uh, red white ogons, mm -hmm. uh, the white butterflies. Now this one, um, does have a pattern, but still would be more in the solid class, which a lot of solids don't show the vertical bars either, and a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know that. Even mm -hmm. when they're young, mm -hmm. they don't have any vertical bars, really? which is nice. Right. Um, and that's actually what I do some breeding of some mm -hmm. of them downstairs in the basement, which mm -hmm. I'll show you later. But I chose these to breed in the store, uh, the solids, because even at a small size, they show off pretty much what right. they're going to look like, only get even brighter. A lot of the right. other pretty species, when they're younger, um, just are brown with vertical bars, and they don't get that color or pattern until right. they hit about three and a half to four inches. So that's why I chose these certain ones, these types to show off and to breed here for the store. Okay, now with discus, um, are they all general like a hardy fish, or are they are, are there some that are more aggressive? Yeah, than other, you know what you I'm know saying. You know what? It's frustrating to me because they get a bad rap as being uh -huh. a fish that's very tough to take care of and right. keep. But right. I actually keep my discus in a show tank right here. Uh -huh. The pH can go as high as seven. Uh -huh. um, I keep it anywhere between six point four and seven point oh. Uh -huh. Temperature at eighty four, and other than that, everything else is the same as other fish. Really? So it's not that big of a deal. With I again, I keep going back to the Asian discus, but. Uh -huh. They seem to have a more sure, wide like, range uh, of, yeah, they're, they're just hardy and more tolerable. Um, and it allows you to put a lot of other different fish in with them as well mm -hmm. in those parameters and not be stuck with just acidic, warmer water fish. Sure, so, sure. Uh, but I, you are still limited in what types of fish to put in there because mm -hmm. of their temperament. They are somewhat of a shy fish as mm -hmm. far as they don't like bigger, fast-moving fish in the tank with them. Mm -hmm. um, so as a result, I really like putting in like rummy nose tetras, sure. neon tetras, sure. Sure. cardinal tetras. We do some quarry cats, mm -hmm. some ornamental um, plecos are in there, mm -hmm. some different loaches you could put in there. Mm -hmm. And we even put in other uh, uh, species of the cichlids like the dwarf uh, uh, German blue rams and the mm -hmm. gold rams do real well with them. So it's, you still have a big variety of what you can add right. with them, even though you are limited to some you cannot. And now, um, again, for me, I always figured, hey, if I can keep a reef, I can keep this. You right? definitely could. Okay. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you could keep a reef tank successful, mm -hmm. you could do this in <laughs> yeah. your sleep, okay. to be honest with you. I really do feel so, that way. So you're saying that really pH is the key in temperature? Yeah, and like I said, it, you, you'll read that they have to be at 6.0 to 6.4, right. and these don't. I mean, I have right. anywhere from 5.5 up to 7.0, mm -hmm. so that's a pretty broad range sure, uh, sure. To, to play with. Um, which is not too bad. And then your, your temperature, once you set the heater, it's set. Right, you don't have right. to worry about that. So uh, keep your nitrates down just like I feel you should for any tank. Right. And so really is no difference as far as I'm concerned. So the water change, 30% water change yes. weekly kind of thing? Now when you're cool. raising them up and it's that way again, everything I'm telling you should be done for every species of fish. Right. Um, but maybe a little bit more so detail oriented with discus. Mm -hmm. If you buy babies to get them to grow and get these massive sizes, that they right. have capability of, of, of achieving. Mm -hmm. uh, like these are young adults in here. Some of my breeders downstairs are nine inches. Mm -hmm. These are probably like anywhere from five to six and a half. Um, 
do a lot of water changes. Now, yes, right. you can do just a weekly water change of 30%. Right. Um, you could do a monthly water change of 30% and we're right. still fine. But if you want to get that optimum growth, mm -hmm. uh, color and size, mm -hmm. I you can even do 50% every day if you right. wanted to. Well, that, <laughs> well, my rooftop, right? yeah. What I do is I actually do daily water changes. See, and that's, right. that's it. And we push that in our store too. Right. We feel the best way to take care of fish in general, fresh, salt, whatever. Right. Uh, multiple feedings small right small amounts more often right. and m smaller water changes more often there's right. just less fluctuation right. and less just events, more, more right? consistency right. and that's what you want in this hobby is keep your tank levels and right. feeding and everything combined just as consistent as possible with the little amount least amount of work as possible sure. and we achieve that through proper adequate filtration sure so I was gonna say yeah, let's talk about that a little bit right sure. meaning that um, from a husbandry side of it, okay, you already talked about, again, sort of a little, little bit of the water chemistry, right? So you're going to make sure your, you know, your nitrates aren't there, your ammonia. Yes. And all that sort of stuff, okay. What are some other details? Like, do you have to constantly gravel wash, We right? Well, or, what I like doing with all my fish tanks, but especially discus, uh -huh. is doing live plants. As you can okay. see, everything yes. in here is alive. And by doing so, you really only need to hydrovac the exposed area because okay. the, the roots of the plants feed off the nitrogen sure. near the area of the base where they're sure. at. So sure. uh, I do hydrovac the open areas, but other than that, I never disturb this tank okay. elsewhere. Um, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Sounds> hydrovac. <laughs> yeah. I'm a hydrovac man. I'm <laughs> but no, uh, like, and, and I've actually taken this tank uh -huh. a step further, uh -huh. and it is one of our favorite filtrations in the store, uh -huh. is the refugium um, okay. by Ecosystems. Ling Sai is, is the, the uh -huh. owner and originator of that. He's a close friend of mine. Okay. And what it's allowed me to do, and I don't know if you'll believe it or not, but I've been in this new building. It'll be going on six years now. Right. And ask me how many water changes on this <laughs> tank I've done with his yeah. ego. I've actually done about 10. Oh, 10 or 12 there you go. In six Man. years. And that's pretty amazing because, A, I have it heavily stocked. Right. As you can see, there's probably 15 adult right. discus right. in a 120 gallon tank and at least 100 combined tetras in there. Right. Um, now, the live plants have somewhat to do with that, but I really feel well, it's a big gym. part of his systems. I mean, I don't even think with a wet dry filter you could get away with right. that small amount of water changes. Right. Uh, and everything stays really nice. No and kidding. Yeah. Well, maybe that's a good break. We'll take a break and let's go actually check out the refugium. Sure. And you kind of, you know, go over yeah. some of the details there Excellent. a little bit. So it's funny because I expected this refugium to be big. Yeah, right. Because you know, it. for me, it's always been man. It is, and I do push oversizing things, right. filtration in the store. Right. But to be honest with you, this is actually oversized for that size tank. Really? Okay. Um, so how big of a? This is a thirty by twelve, which they call it a thirty twelve refugium. Okay. That's how he labels all his product is just by the size. By the size. Uh, thirty twelve, thirty sixteen, thirty six sixteen, twenty four ten, and so on. Okay. Um, by this way, you, you know those two well. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we love that product. That's why. But anyway, it's pretty simple function. Uh -huh. um, so, first of all, the purpose of, of a refugium, okay. right, for all those people who don't know, is yeah, basically to remove the harmful waste out of the water and to provide some beneficial microorganisms to the mm -hmm. tank. Pretty and when much you, in the when you say harmful wastes, uh, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, mm -hmm. and that's the big key is the nitrate. Most all your filters you buy nowadays will are designed to remove ammonia and nitrites. Right. But if they're working properly, they're actually producing nitrates, and then you got to do your water changes mm -hmm. to remove them. Right. Uh, with this type of filtration, the root system of the live plants moving at a slow level, your your, your flow rate slows down through here. Right. Have an exposure time to the roots and the plants feed off nitrogen, right. just like we use nitrogen to fertilize our lawns sure. and shrubs and trees sure. and bushes. Same theory. Sure. Uh, it's lowering the nitrate. So it, because of that, spreads out your water changes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's 10 times every six <laughs> yeah. years is a good yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, that is, is the truth, what I told you, right. but we do recommend more than that at home. I don't have time to do it here, but right. what's nice about it is I've proved that it can handle even doing those right. limits. So that's what's nice about yeah, it. Very much so. Um, Okay, so coming through here then, if we if we kind of follow water then, okay, um, how much water? First of all, do you have 
flown it doesn't C look series. like a lot right. and it does and it's basically because of the dividers and there's right. some openings in there just allow it to break differently at different levels instead of all coming through blasting in one level right um so i actually believe it or not have 1200 gallons per hour running through here. really because what we like doing in our store is trying to hit a 10 times turnover ratio of gallons per hour uh -huh. which allows your whole entire body of water of your tank to run through the filter 10 times every single sure. hour and that's how you get that polished water sure. uh, healthy fish and heavy uh, dissolved oxygen in the tank sure. so but because of the way this is designed with the different walls and slots and baffles it takes the right, water through there cool. at a slower level in this main area to give it exposure right, time. Right. So basically you're running out of the tank into a 100 micron sock. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how often do you clean that? So that out? one, it depends on the tank, depends on the load, and depends on your water changes. But here I probably change that once a week. Okay, yeah, because and again... They do. I mean, it's meant, right. that, and the higher the micron, the more you'd have to change it because it's going to grab even finer uh, particles. Right. So. Um, I, I right here it's once a week right. and what we actually recommend to the customer is one sock comes with the unit and just buy another yep. one and we just rotate them and we do clean them by hosing them off and then just putting them in a mild bleach solution mm -hmm. for about just literally 10 to 15 minutes then rehosing them let it sit till the next week till you just change it with the other one see it's fine because for the reef tank right now i change my socks every two days two yeah days. that would be it is for fresh water yeah. it definitely backs off from i, I don't know what Which it is, is or what about the the reef but it does seem to it have to be changed right? yes it, it cool. does and one thing we do too uh, cheating a little bit uh -huh. We have people, if they don't have the luxury of being home, right. they travel or whatever, you could right. cut little tiny notches at the upper part of that uh -huh. sock. So if you're not there, so it doesn't start coming idea. out the top, yes. it's still going to be forcing through that sock, but if it, right. some of it can, you know, escape right. through those slots. Right. Like so. a relief valve, Yes, so yes, that's, that's right. Great so it idea. helps. Yeah. Okay, so it's coming down through the sock. Yeah, and then over in this side, you can actually add other media. Uh -huh. uh, I have a uh, carbon bag in there right sure. now, but you can run peat moss, you can run your mm -hmm. Fosban reactors over there, or pretty much anything you want. CO2 system, mm -hmm. um, cow if it's a saltwater system, and right. so on but now for for the discus right? we just run i would recommend carbon and peat moss okay carbon and peat moss yes um so you don't have the phosphate issues that you have you like in the do resistance? um you can you don't seem to have it as high as you know as, yeah. other than what's coming in your tap water sure but again the phosphates don't seem to affect the algae growth as much as it would in a salt water okay. tank Very good. i think it's just from the live plants being in there uh combating it to be honest with you that makes sense um so i i you can see how clean the tank right. was. Yeah, and this is clean. I've never even wiped those side or back walls up there really? ever. Just yeah. the front glass. It just doesn't okay. grow. So, so it's just really nice. Like yes. And so your carbon, um, again, if you have a uh, carbon reactor kind of sure. thing. Like a lot of my viewers, they, have you ever heard of Bulk Reef Supply? Yes, I have heard of it, yes. So they have a, they have a carbon that's called ROX. Yeah. It's really, really small. And wow. it's already kind of pre-washed. Really? So. They see, that sounds really nice. Yeah, they use that and what they do is they end up just putting it through a media reactor. Wow. Because, you know, they. And I do love reactors yeah. of any kind. I In here, you can see my space was limited. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I, I'm i a big fan of reactors. So, so then, so. If, again, if you're keeping discus, you can yes, use one of those. Absolutely. Well. Okay. Absolutely. And then what's nice, after you run it through your sock and your media, right. then it flows through here and hits the miracle mud, which. Right. Um, as close of friends as I am with Ling, he still uh -huh. says uh, he could tell me what's in there, but he'd have to kill me. So <laughs> <laughs> nobody sure. knows his exact right. ingredients in right. there, but it does. It just makes these plants explode and your saltwater uh, macroalgae uh -huh. just take off like nuts. And uh, going back to the saltwater part of it, it even you different grow different cultures in here right. they'll feed microorganisms into the tank for your corals right. and for tough to keep species like manor and blennies and right. Um, right. different uh, types of fish like that that are pretty picky do you, eaters. Do you ever have to like refresh the milk? You do. Okay. Um, what they recommend you do is take half of it out once a year. Um, okay, that's so fine. it's pretty simple. Once yeah. a year if you, you were told you just got to do you know it's different than changing filter inserts once a month right. on an outside power filter right. and money wise too. Right. So when you break it all down these are more expensive up front but um, without your time doing those See, extra water yes. changes and time nowadays is more important than anything to Very people with so. kids and running all these errands <laughs> and working and everything like we else. Were talking so, about, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's so right. 
Uh, pretty simple, runs through that media, go yep. through the Miracle Mud and plants. I, yeah, what kind of plant do you have here? I have Wisteria is what I have yep. in here, but I've used Java Fern, Java Moss, Wisteria. Okay. Um, you could pretty much use anything I, I'd imagine. I can't see anything not thriving in here. Mm -hmm. um, but I like this because I just let it float. Mm -hmm. And then it gets so big right. so quickly that it just anchors itself and then goes right into the sand. So it works very well. And do you have to prune it? I do prune it. It'll actually grow out on top sure. of the out of here. Yes. Sure. Yep. I mean, I know one of the things that to me always made sense was, again, the more you prune, faster it grows. Exactly. The more it does. Yeah. You're exactly right. And like even in the saltwater tank, the luxury of doing that and in the freshwater, you could prune this plant and then put sprigs into your tank. Same with the salt water. Right. You could throw it in there and feed your tank, some right. of the macroalgae and so on. Right. So there's so many different benefits to it. I, I just really, really push them here in good, the store. Good, good. Yeah. What kind of light do you have on top? I just use a simple compact light. Is okay. That's what they come with. Um, okay. If you're doing your own type of refugium, you mm -hmm. could use compacts or even halides. Okay. Um, but they come with the compacts, which is a nice energy efficient light. And is it uh, like... We do run that 24 hours a day. There you go. Yes. So and they used to when he first started say have the refugium right. lights kick on when your right. tank lights go off but right. he's actually changed it in the handbook and everything that they feel it does better keeps a more even Wonder. kill really? so you don't have any of your bleaching of the especially the saltwater macroalgae sure. or or uh, spawning of it sure. um, yeah. turning asexual yes. on yeah, you so yeah it seems that. to combat it and um, in general the light that comes with it, what's the, the Calvin rating? Uh, on there, on this, they usually do just pure 10,000 so 10, K. Yeah, they just okay, want just like for growth. Now, now, no. no. Yeah, okay. 6,500 or 10,000, you could choose. Okay. So, okay. either one of them. And 65, again, is closer to the sunlight. Yes, so. that's exactly right. And that's what we're trying to achieve is just heavy sunlight in these to get those plants or uh, the growing sure. or macroalgae. Okay, so, so there. it relieves there, comes over this baffle and mm -hmm. flows down through your aerobic uh, bacteria. Right. to feed off your ammonia and nitrite. So mm -hmm. nitrate's fed off of here, ammonia and nitrite's here, then it flows over to here into your pump, mm -hmm. and we pump out here into the UV sterilizer, which I told you is on yes. every system in here, and then back up to the and, tank. And they're running 24-7? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. And do you ever have to clean, like, the uh, the biomedia? The biomedia, no. I mean, every once in a while you'll see there's some little plants that yeah. get down in there. Yeah. Sometimes after a year I'll go in there and just remove some sure. of that, but sure. I never do rinse them. A lot of people do make that mistake of, I'm right. going to clean my tank really good today and rinse their bio wheel if they have that, or right. rinse their bio meaning they're killing all their aerobic bacteria <laughs> right. because of the chlorine in our tap water. Right. Exactly. So we tell people on if they ever use it on a bio wheel or any biological media, right. if for whatever reason it gets so bad that they have to clean it, but it, it, first of all, it shouldn't if they're keeping up with their mechanical filtration. Right. So, But if they don't and it happens to be real sludgy or dirty, just take some of your tank water and dip it in there and wring it out so you're at least not killing it with chlorine. So yeah, it exactly. seems to work okay. Very good. Okay. Right. So we've got the sump. Yes. Right. Um, that, that, and that's basically your filtration. That is running that whole entire tank. Yeah. Nice. So yes. this sump here is running, what is it, 120 gallon you said? Yes, that's running a 120 and that's a 3012. Now, see the difference between the salt and the fresh. They have the 3012 standard and then right. the 3012 Pro, which comes with a protein skimmer, which is for the salt that water. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and then we loved it so much, we even added a 4824 uh -huh. to our uh, invert system downstairs. So it runs through the whole sump sure. and everything I explained in the previous show, right. Right. Um, but then comes out of there and runs through a refugium, which I could show you down there when you we'll see the We'll definitely do that when we do the filter. Yeah, filter. sure. Very good. All right. Okay, so we covered filtration. Yes. Now, if I'm going to keep a discus fish, right? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to go through the checklist. Right? Sure. We know, um, like, in reef tanks, more water is better. Is it the same? Yeah, it is. We this? do like larger bodies of water. Just, A, just the, the size the fish get to. Like I said, they could hit, you know, up nine inches, ten right. inches. Right. Um, but even the ones that don't get quite that as large, um, you'll see just having a volume. But we feel the biggest thing about having volume of water the waste is more diluted, temperature doesn't fluctuate as easily, mm -hmm. uh, your water changes don't have to be done as often. See, people think it's the opposite. 
I'm doing this kind of X amount of work on a 20 gallon, what would a 200 gallon be like? But everything's so diluted, right. yes, you have more um, leeway with, sure. with, with sure. your levels. So sure. yeah, we, we do always push that on any size tank, uh, I, any type of species of fish. Now, uh, is there a minimum? Uh, I would say 55. So 55 um, is the small size it, tank? Well, you want. could do like a 30 gallon sure. if you only want a couple. Sure. But the big problem is people get hooked real no, no. quick. Yeah, I already see you come in here and just buy two of these right. and see all the different patterns. They yeah. always right. want more. And then they have to either get a bigger tank exactly. or they're just stuck and then come in here and get teased all the time <laughs> exactly. from the, uh, not being able to buy stuff they <laughs> exactly. see. But that's another thing we take pride in. A lot of places you go to, you see some beautiful fish in their show tanks. Right. Then you go to see what you're able to buy and nah, I can't get that in or that's going to be hard to get in. Right. But you'll see here, um, the varieties I get in, I get anything in that show tank in. Right. We try to get stuff in three different size ranges, uh -huh. two and a half inch size, uh, three and a half to four inch, and then five to six inch size, okay. which are, are really nice intervals of sizes that still can all be mixed with each other too. That's what I was going to ask. Can you yeah, mix them You can. The only thing you got to watch uh, a is that's going back to having a big enough tank. If you have sure. a little 30 gallon, you don't want to stick a sure. six inch Territory, discus right? with a lid. That's, that's right, because right, they are cichlids. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the other thing would be during feeding mm -hmm. the larger fish, make sure your little fish are getting you know enough to eat and just try to do some target feeding. Um, but they grow almost to adult size within about 10 to 14 months. So, really? Um, so lots keep, of water changes? Yes, and, and that gets them there, okay. that's right. Uh, one thing I do recommend with discus, I do stop at the two and a half inch size because mm -hmm. I feel anything smaller than that, first of all, you may end up with a runt and not know it. Um, right. And also, just the immune system and the sturdiness of the fish right. starts at about two and a half inches. Right. For, so yeah. better success, I wouldn't go smaller than two and a half with okay. discus. And I don't carry anything smaller than that. Now you mentioned food? Yes, what food. They're, and again, that's what's nice about these, what I have them trained is a big variety. That's another thing people say they're finicky eaters. Right. But I have mine eating simple sinking tetra bit pellets. Oh, right, right. Uh, Hikari frozen blood worms. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally some live black worms. Mm -hmm. um, and you even have some of my customers feeding them flake food. Mm -hmm. So they're you could so pretty much get them to a wide yeah. range of food. And I do recommend a wide range, wide variety for all species of fish uh, for a number of reasons. All these mm -hmm. different foods, some are high in fiber, but low in crude fat, some are high in vitamins, but um, like frozen foods, good vitamins and minerals, but it's almost 90% water. Right. Um, flake food, pellets, and uh, stuff like freeze-dried right. food is going to be real high in crude fat, fiber, and protein, which right. is very important, uh, especially for discus because they're almost all body. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these fish are big, but they have their bodies like this, and they have a lot of finish. Right. They're almost all body, so right. they need a good, varied diet. And, and again, feed them. Try to feed them two to three times a day. Two to three times a day. Yes. Again, Absolutely. as much as they can eat every. Yeah, and that's another thing, <laughs> the mistakes that's out there. Right. What our rule of thumb here in our store is we do what they can eat in 30 seconds. Bottom um, line. Yeah, oh, good. and a lot of good. food cans will tell you feed what they'll eat in two to right. three minutes, but right. that's where your phosphates and nitrates and right. that shoot through the roof. Because what happens, fish's stomachs are about the size of their eyes. So uh -huh. people say, well, they eat everything I'm giving them. Yeah, they'll eat it, but they don't digest it. And you get this right. heavy waste load being put in there. So right. small amounts more often. Right. And if you have the luxury of being living at home or not working or having enough right. time having a tank in your office right. being feed, able to feed up to five or six times a day that even be better, better small amounts so again, everything's more consistent often. right, right. Yep. Oh, very good yeah so we talked a little bit about okay the filtration we yes. know water quality we know food now yes what about lighting is there any kind of special lighting requirements? i like a little bit of a higher wattage just be, if you're going to do the live uh -huh. plants but if you aside the plants set aside uh -huh. they don't like super bright light themselves okay. although these adapt to it just fine okay um i diffuse that by adding some floating plants up in here sure. like either water sprite or that wisteria i spoke about in the refugium right. Right. and i have wisteria here and water sprite here to show uh -huh. people uh, and i do sell it out of these things right. so um it, it's i i do for the color though i found the two best bulbs because most discus either have red blue green uh -huh. um in them or purple even tints the uh, flora sun uh by zoomax okay. the flora sun brings out red 
yellow and orange. Okay. And the reef sun brings out blue, purple, green. Okay. So you pretty much hit every color under the rainbow. And you're not creating fake color, you're bringing out the real color right. that's there. Right, right. Uh, also, the flora sun is a plant uh, light. Right. Um, but I find the flora sun's really good for the photosynthesis mm -hmm. part of it. And mm -hmm. the reef sun is uh, more. Uh, higher at Kelvin, sure, sure. lower penetrating and good for the root system. So right, right. I feel so all the way color. around, you got good coloring, good for the plants. Oh, yeah. very cool. Yep. Wattage wise. Uh, wattage on a tank, difference. I would say no, but okay. if you're going to do the plants, yes, then I would probably sure. try to hit five watts per gallon Okay. Uh, for most plants. But if the plants um, that we do like putting in with the discus to mm -hmm. handle that warmer water, maybe slightly acidic, right. um, Java fern, Java moss does phenomenal, mm -hmm. and any type of cryptoporin does very well. Okay. So okay. those are my three favorite right there. So does it make sense if you're going to start off uh, on a discus tank to actually do like what you did here, meaning bare bottom, maybe some floating plants, get things kind they, of it, it, I tell you what, if you had, weren't worry about aesthetics, uh -huh. but you can even see a bare bottom tank can no, look pretty, especially if you even added more plants in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but other than a side aesthetic set aside, uh -huh. bare bottom would be best just okay. for sterilization. But you see my show tank. I got gravel, driftwood, right. plants, everything. So it's not a must by any right. means. Right. Um, if you're breeding and raising them, bare bottoms, I feel is a must. Breeding them and mm -hmm. raising them because yeah. more sterile environment, able easier to do your quick water changes, sure. siphon waste off sure. the bottom. But as far as keeping them, no, not at all. You can keep yeah. them in full blown decorated okay. tank. Very cool. So it sounds like right now, at least got the understandings of what we need to keep. Yes. To keep it yeah, I hope fish. so. Yeah. Um, maybe what we can do now is if we can spend maybe five minutes or so just going over the different ones so people okay. get a feel. Right? Sure. Yeah, we can go down through the list um, real quick. And again, I this is just scratching the surface yeah. of what I uh, can get in and do get in. Sure. I try to always have at least eight to ten different species in at all times, minimum. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and then each order, I try to alternate that so I'm continually getting in different varieties for people that already have set varieties sure. in there. Sure. Uh, and then I also do take special orders and then track down other colors sure. for people too. Sure. Uh, like for instance, just in this tank alone, uh -huh. you have some ocean greens here. Hold, hold on. Before we get it, let's take a break for our sponsors. Okay. All right, and then great. we'll jump in. Okay, great. So before I so rudely interrupt, <laughs> no, that's okay. I got ahead of myself. No, I get excited no. when we talk this. Good. Oh, this is cool, actually. <laughs> so show me what we, I mean. Like okay, we and um, there's some two ocean greens, actually three ocean greens in here. Okay. There's one, two, three, and then there's two blue diamonds. You can see them when they're side by side. That's more greenish, right. and that's more blue. Right. right. Um, Ocean green, blue diamond. Now that's called an albino checkerboard. Okay. Uh, then this one here is a pigeon snakeskin. Okay. Um, yellow face, super red melon. Okay. Um, this is a cross between a snakeskin and a blue diamond. Mm -hmm. um, they call them a blue scorpion, um, which is a very nice fish. Mm -hmm. And this is called a red golden diamond. Um, kind of get that golden cast yes, up front, red yes. on the ball, on the edges. A very yes. pretty fish. Yes. That's just one tank. Oh, also I have the uh, yellow diamond in there too. So that's just one tank of varieties there. Some of the five to six inch stuff. Now um, get it. Uh, we'll say uh, as far as sturdiness wise, they're all the same. That is yes. Yes, Everyone that's one thing I could say of all these different colors, there's not one I would say is hardier than nice, the others, nice. which is nice about the Asian type yes. discus that I carry. I, that's, that's, everything's pretty even keel. Okay, so show me some more. Okay, over here there's some super red checkerboards, which some will develop a more solid pattern, some will wow. stay more of that checkered yeah, pattern. I like those. Um, over here, leopard snake skins, which has more of a golden background body with the smaller red dots. Okay. Over here is a very similar fish, but blue background with a larger polka dots they call them red diamonds okay. uh, or in the red leopards um, and then here's the red white ogons like I had yeah, in the show that. tank yes. red body with a white dorsal white face very similar but you can see the different colors in reds even they're right. more orangish red and it's a more deep red right. that's the yellow face super red melon um, down here the little white butterflies mm -hmm. uh, this is an interesting fish it's called a super red cover and there's like four other species very similar to these uh, mm -hmm. a virgin red um, in a San Mara, 
they call it, or uh, people call them samurais, mm -hmm. and then the red cover, and then a super red cover. And it just, the different names are just the different levels of quality, and the super red cover is the one. When they get adults, uh -huh. You can see that little bit of deep red in the bottom yes. of that dominant one's fins. Yes. Their whole body gets that color. They keep a green metallic gill plate, and then they get a white band all the way across in their dorsal fin. It's just a gorgeous right. fish. You would never even know right. that from looking at them at this size. They're just starting to get right. a touch of color. They're right. beautiful fish. Right. Uh, over here, the gold millenniums. I had two of them in the show. Right. They call them yellow gold right. millennium uh, or 14 karat golds. Uh, <laughs> so these are some of my baby blue diamonds I bred in the store. Uh, downstairs uh, and some of just the yellow diamonds in mm -hmm. here and these are some uh, super yellow um, these are very similar to the yellow millennium gold uh -huh. but they don't have any of the red pattern in their fins right. they're more of a solid right. yellow right very cool okay so now if I'm looking at these what can I expect to spend cost wise it does that's where it does make a big difference like a sure. perfect example is this is a two and a half inch to three inch blue diamond I'm selling mm -hmm. them for $39.99 mm -hmm. You take that same size fish in a super red checkerboard, it's 129. Right. So uh, different species, the temperament's about the same. You sure. asked earlier, compatibility is good, but you will see some pricing right. difference in some of the more rare stuff. Right. And that's why I do always try to keep in mm -hmm. some more what I feel common stuff. Maybe even to other stores, my common stuff's higher end stuff. Sure. But sure. Uh, I definitely get in the super rare and hard to get stuff too. You know, it's funny again coming from the reef side. It's kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's all yeah. Like, no. Right, right, yeah, you know. that's it. When it comes to expense and you're used to buying right. corals and, and the saltwater fish, this isn't right. even a hot, more expensive ones aren't no. bad at all. Right. Yeah, no. you're just buying for the Yeah, I, I'd probably say your average of a two to three inch discus would be anywhere, probably an average around $50 okay. for a, the high end stuff. Um, okay. Fifty nine dollars, uh, lower end stuff in the thirties. Okay. Um, as you jump into four to six or four and a half inch right. stuff, probably about fifty nine to ninety nine, and then the bigger stuff one fifty to two two three hundred. Okay. Okay. But that's for a six inch, sure. seven inch sure. fish. Substantial, yeah. Right? Very good. Well, you know, it, it, I think it sounds like this is a good place to end this because we start talking about breeding. Yeah. All right, so maybe what we'll do next time. We'll see how you breed and you know what you do. Sure, you yeah, we definitely. I'd, I'd love to show you. Again, sure. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for, for having time. us. Thanks for having us. Again, if you are in McMurray, PA, Wet Pets and Friends, again, it's well worth the time. And uh, if you're anything like me, you'll be starting up a discus <laughs> tank soon, right? Yeah, yeah. And what better place to go? Yeah. Right? So, thanks. again, thanks for watching American Reef. I'll be, we're calling it the American Discus. Yeah, there we, we go. go. I like that. And, uh, you know, all Asians are the uh, Asians are the good ones, right? Not yeah, well, that's Asian. my personal preference. So I really Asians like them. that are raised in America. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Again, thanks for watching American Reef. As I always say, uh, please support our sponsors. Give them the chance and the right to earn your business. Because if it wasn't for them, these videos wouldn't be possible. Again, thanks for watching American Reef, and stay tuned next week for another video. Maybe reef keeping, maybe discus. Actually, <laughs> yeah. we know it's not. Yeah. We know it's discus yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah, we're gonna show the breeding. So stay tuned for next week. We'll talk to Brian then.